something like I think that. so. Yeah, like they're about five or six times. Yeah. We got a lot of talk about this time though. Last time it's always about Reg Monroe. Oh yes, yes, yes. Let's All right, here, let me get on our Facebook so we can see if people are asking us questions. And then we'll get started. All righty. So, so, congratulations on uh, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Number one on streaming, I think I read in the first 24 hours of 1.8 million people watching on HBO Max. Jeez. It's the number one movie in the country right now. You know, uh, it's kind of wild, man, because um, they get that the movie companies got it. They finally figured it out. They figured out that they yeah. can get a piece of both. You know, they can get a piece of yeah, it is really interesting. Showing it and a movie theater showing it. Yeah, it's sort of because of the pandemic, it's changed how people see that. Because before it was like, oh, it's a step down or something. And it was one or the other. And I think I was surprised that things are doing as well, you know, like doing very well in the theater and also doing well on demand. It's, um, yeah, it's a nice surprise, actually. For all of you who might not know who this is, this is my buddy Steve. Steve and me go way back. We go all the way back to when he was Ray Monroe hey, on The Walking right Dead. Back in the, in the aughts. <laughs> and uh, I actually purchased this off eBay because, um, you know, me and him go back all the way from when he first was on on uh, The Walking Dead many moons ago. And, you know, he's also the in the Insidious. You're in all those movies, right? Most of them, like three of them, two of them, two of them. And then you're you're in the Conjuring movies and you're in the Annabelle movies, right? Yeah, I f I follow the Warrens wherever they go. If they call me, I will I will be there. At first, I thought I was going to die. You'll be there. And uh, when we last talked, I think you were part of my uh, uh, out of the box 2.0, and oh, yeah. you had told us that the Conjuring, the Devil Made Me Do It, was done for last year, but it didn't get to come out because of the pandemic. Yeah. And what, it's been a while since we talked, you know, I think it was way back in the first of the pandemic. Yeah. How did, you, how did you survive the pandemic being a guy that is always like working, doing something in movies? I mean, what yeah, did you do was, to survive? Well, it was kind of, it, I think for like a lot of people, those first couple of weeks felt kind of like a, like a snow day. It, it felt kind of odd and scary, but you know, it was almost like, oh, yeah, I have to stay home. And then it got to be like Groundhog Day that you'd wake up and go, well, today's going to be different. And it wasn't different. And then months went by. Um, luckily, we had just moved into this house where I am now. And so it was nice to get to spend a lot of time in it. Um, but also what I did years and years ago to support myself as a struggling actor, I did carpentry and renovated apartments in New York City. And I hadn't done any of that kind of woodworking um, stuff. So I slowly bought some tools and turned this little garage next to my house into a little shed. And I've been building uh, tables and plant stands and window things and bookshelves. And uh, until I started the, the fall acting picked back up again. So I haven't done a lot. But yeah, it was very. I didn't sell. It wasn't to sell. It was just to make stuff. It was very satisfying. It was... So did you find yourself like in the little workshop? Why didn't you record any of this? You could have recorded the days and trials of of Steve, Father Gordon, and all that. You know. <laughs> well, a video. If we have another pandemic, I'll record it. So. Yeah, you know, you could have made a. You could have made your own million off of this. You know, you were doing woodworking. <laughs> yes. It would have been your shot, man. Yes. No, you, could have, you could have made your own Annabelle uh, thing, you know, put Annabelle in it, you know? I'm, I'm very happy where I am right now. <laughs> so, well, how have you been? That's funny. So, but, you know, you, you did, uh, the devil made me do it like, what in 2019? Uh, 
God, yeah, the summer, that whole summer we did it. And then it was supposed to be released in 2021. Yeah. And so did yeah. you have other stuff that you had done in 2019 that hasn't been released yeah. yet? Yeah, oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. There's a movie I did with um, Mel Gibson and another movie called El Tonto with Charlie Day. Um, I think those are the only things that haven't come out yet. So yeah. Did you, did you ever, when you first started, as Father Gordon in these movies, this is little small parts that you were in. Did you ever think that this universe, because Conjuring was the very first in the universe. Yeah. Did you ever think this universe would be this big now? No, I think it's 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 crazy. It's the fact that what is kind of cool is that James Wan, you know, he he sticks to what he he doesn't he sort of doesn't pander to the audience. But he knows what you know. The Conjuring is it's like scary, but it, he makes it very, very real, which I think makes it scarier. It makes it like a, not just a horror movie. I think it's kind of cool that those movies have drawn in non-horror fans um, and turned them into horror fans. So yeah, but yeah, when I did that first thing, it was like one little scene, and I was like, bye, thank you. I've done so many of that kind of role where you just, you literally work for a, a day, and. Uh, and then the movie took off. And then I got a call about a year later when and James was like, he wanted me to be, what's his name? Carl in the Insidious thing. And I was like, yeah, it turned I think I've done seven movies with James Wan. It's crazy. He's very loyal. And I actually snuck onto the set of uh, another movie he did. <laughs> Cause I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. And I, was, I went on the set. It's his newest horror that's coming out, I guess soon. What's it called? should know that um he sort of went back to his small independent kind of roots but we snuck on his uh, the first ad said why don't you just go stand over there surprise him so i snuck into his movie so did you get in the movie or not did you like yeah probably him and he was yeah because it's it's a scene where there's some neighbors gathered around and so i just i just stood with the rest of the neighbors and uh It'll be like, where's Waldo, I think. <laughs> did, it, did he Did he say, did he see you and say something? He did a double take because he was going, setting up the shot. And <laughs> was like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's funny. He, um, he's a really good, loyal, tremendous guy. And are you going to be in any other Conjuring movies? Like, uh, is there going to be another Annabelle, a new nun? Is there going to be I, what's going I on? Have, I literally have no idea. I know there's another... No, there's another insidious because Patrick Wilson is going to direct it, but that's all I'd heard about that. Um, I don't do that much horror, but I will, I'll always do a Conjuring if they. If that's they, kind of that's kind of wild that you you talk about Patrick Wilson, right? That's the same. He he was in Insidious and he's in the Conjuring movies. Yeah, it's for, I, I get very confused. <laughs> I, it's it, it's wild, you know. I remember I remember him being on a show that had two seasons where he had this little white older lady that was like his, he helped him, but I can't remember the name of it. It was like, it had two seasons and it was great. It was a great show. And of course, you know, uh, how you say your name, Vera? Yeah, Vera for me. You know, of course we saw her in Bates Motel and loved to hate her. You know, she was just, her and uh, Freddie Highmore were just great together on that show, you know? Was it was it cool? Does, do you ever get to the point, like, you know, working with them two, did you ever get to the point where this is pretty cool to be here, you know? Did you ever, like, go... Oh, I feel I pretty much feel that on every job because not only the people you get to meet, you know, sometimes you're working with people, like when I got to work with Al Pacino or Robert De Niro, these are guys that I grew up, you know, more than idolizing. That's one of the reasons I became an actor. Mm. And, it's, and it's the same thing when I did The Walking Dead, because I was a huge fan of that show. I'd watched it from the very first episode. And you're kind of like, uh, it's like you have two personalities. You have the professional part of you, the grown up. But then the, there's the little kid inside of you that's going, oh, my God, that's Rick. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Michael Corleone. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it's very exciting because it's like that's that's what we grew up with. And that, this, yeah. that's 
some of the it's like it's like meeting a baseball player you idolize. It's, you, know. you know, I remember I still remember when I got a hold of you when you play rig and you were so nice then. You were like, you know, yeah, sure, let's talk, you know. And, and now what you know, happened? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Such a but such a great great character on that show. You know, one thing about The Walking Dead that upsets me the most is you don't have character growth. You know, like uh, Michael, uh, Daryl's brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Rooker. Daryl's brother. Michael Rooker, the actor? Yeah, Michael Rooker. It said that, you know, his character didn't get a lot of growth on the show. You didn't get to see a lot about him. Yeah. But they're saying they might be going back and doing backstories about Daryl and Merle growing up. Oh, wow. And Michael Rooker swears he won't ever do The Walking Dead again. But, you know, he was only supposed to be on one scene of The Walking Dead. Yeah. That was on top of the on top of the building. But then he got big, like Carol. Carol was supposed to be killed in the first season, too. But yeah. like 10, yeah. 10 seasons later, she's still there, and she's fixing it her own show with Daryl. So yeah. you never know what will happen. With Reg, you know, we didn't get the... I thought your character was more interesting than the woman that played your wife in it. I thought your character was more interesting because you were the one who built the place. You're the person, you know, we didn't get to really go in detail of that. Did you, did that, back then did that upset you because you didn't get to go in more detail of your character? Well, yeah, the only thing that was disappointing was sort of, sometimes as an actor, you get a, you'll get a role, you'll get a relationship. And the thing that happened, you know, with Noah, where it was this sort of father son thing mm -hmm. at the top, that could have had a really nice, you know, life to it because he, what was fun about Reg was that he was such an optimist, you know, there was no real inner conflict. Yeah. And it's kind of relaxing to play someone like that. And you also, but you also know if you're someone like that in the walking dead, your days are numbered already. If you, yeah. if you talk about the future with any kind of hope, it's like, yep, there's the bullseye. <laughs> you're, it's foreshadowing that you're going to be the first one to out. you know? Oh, yeah. It's like a red shirt in Star Trek. It's like, yeah. yeah. You're the first one to and, and funny enough, you said you were a carpenter in your old career, and you were a carpenter in Walking Dead. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's weird. You learn a bunch of stuff, and sometimes some of it you can use some... Um, you know, this becomes a part of who you are, whether it's through humility or... Who, who was your favorite person when you were on The Walking Dead to play with? Was it to play with Andrew Lincoln or was it to play with Norman? Or who, who was it that you really enjoyed to be a part of? And my next question about that, and we'll get away from that, yeah. is did you stay after you were killed and check out the show a little more? Did they let you stay on the set? And are you welcome there if you ever want to go back? Oh, well, first of all, the person I liked, I, I really, I guess, it's hard because I like, Andrew and I just kind of hit it off, which once in a while happens with an actor and you feel like you're doing something, but you're not. It's just, I think it's a happy, lucky chemistry or something, or you, you have something in common with how you've worked or come up. And so that was a really, and since that was my very first night of filming, I really relaxed into it. I went, this is going to be nice. Um, I also love working with uh, Tyler as uh, Noah because he's just a very genuine kid. And um, that was it. Yeah, I didn't, after I had already, you know, I spent a lot of time around the set. And when, first of all, that, that was the last night of shooting for the fifth season. Uh, the night that I died and uh, what's his name? Um, porch Dick, whatever, Pete. Yeah, yeah, Pete. What did he call him, Porch Dick? Porch Dick. Yeah, Porch Dick. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Andrew, Andrew's the one who avenged your death. Yes, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but that was the last night of shooting. They had a little couple of pickup shots the next day, but that was pretty much the end of shooting for the season. And yeah, I'm not a big one to go back to places. I'm sure you'd be welcome. They were always very, and I've, you know, very kind of kept in touch with a bunch of the producers and stuff. And you've uh, signed plenty of these, probably. Yeah, I, I haven't been to a show in a long time. And you probably signed a bunch of these, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, those are odd when you have to sign them. It's it's uh, 
it makes you wish you were a baseball player. So it's like, ah, it's just a character in a TV show. It's did you like, did you think that you'd actually get a card? No, out of the deal. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, not at all. <laughs> uh, this is this isn't the only card you got in the Walking Dead either, is it? You've got a couple different. I think that there was, it might have been about three or four. I don't yeah. know what what how that works. Uh, if it's like a minor league card, then a major league card. <laughs> wow. So when you when you go wow, okay, do you live in New York? No, I live in Atlanta. In Atlanta, okay. Yeah, my, the hotbed of everything, really. So been, when you yeah, when you go out, do people know you from Insidious, or do they know you from the Conjuring, no. or do they know you as Red from The Walking Dead being in no. Atlanta? I have got in it. it if you've recently been on something, sometimes you get that. But one of the things I love about Atlanta is everyone isn't in the entertainment business. So people aren't looking regular. And I once, in a, like I did a commercial, a Geico commercial in the fall, and I'd get recognized from that. But it's, it's, I might as well be a, you know, work at a, own a hardware store. <laughs> it's, it's really nice. It, there's no, that's the one thing that would be weird about the kind of fame that, you know, well, for Melissa McBride has had to deal with it. You know, she gets recognized, especially in that she lives down in that area. And it's not pleasant. You can't go out to buy groceries without someone wanting a picture with you. And then and after a while, it's like, it's a very odd feeling. And uh, do you ever, would you ever have those times when people do notice you every once in a while? Yeah, it'll be like, what's it's people won't know why they'll go, they may have seen something in the last couple of days and they go, you're the, are you, do I, did we go to school to be, and then sometimes people will check, you'll see them checking like IMDB, <laughs> but you feel like they're the secret police and they're checking like a suspect photo. <laughs> Get him. Uh, Sean G, everybody, we're on Facebook Live too. This will be on YouTube later, but Sean G had a question. He said, how long did it, did you have to go through in makeup when you do makeup? Uh, for, for, for which? Uh, I'd say probably Insidious because he said he has all of the Insidious movies. So, the, yeah, actually, that probably was the longest for a role. I've done a longer thing for a commercial, but because when I did the Insidious two, my first one, um, I didn't have time to grow the goatee. So they built one. Uh -huh. um, for the third one, I had time. I had enough warning that I could grow a goatee. Because it took, because you know, with, with HD cameras and stuff, yeah, uh, you got it's got to look pretty good. And it's, but that would take about two and a half hours to do. Well, was that fun, or did it? Was it? Yeah, like... it is. Oh yeah, because it's it's like playing dress up as the kid. It's like it's like putting on a mask and. I did one time I had a mustache made for me in New York for an HBO thing. It was individually sewn and it looked more real than if it was actually mine. The, the artistry that, um, and Eleanor is the makeup person on, on Insidious and Conjuring. She's amazing. And uh, uh, yeah, it's really kind of fun. In between all that, you were Prince Charles, right? Yeah, I did the first one of those like two, three years ago, and they did a second one that I was busy. I was shooting the hunt down in Louisiana, so I couldn't do that one. But they, I'm shooting them. Uh, I can't tell you what, but it's a Marvel TV series right now. Uh, no way. Are you? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. I will wait, not wait, answer. No, your no, you don't answer. Don't answer. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so. First of all, let's let's hold the pause about the Marvel thing, okay? Now, how was it to play Prince Charles in that movie? Because you had a pretty predominant role in there. You were the dad, yeah, of William, right? Of of and Andrew, uh, and uh, it was just a lot of fun. We shot it up in Vancouver, and some in Los Angeles that looked like Africa. Uh, north of Los Angeles is this huge ranch that they use for uh, Westworld and. Uh, Mm. Little House on the Prairie and stuff. Um, uh, what were we saying? <laughs> you were Prince Charles. Oh, yeah. So that was a lot of fun um, getting to do. It's also fun because so many British actors come and play 
American. It was fun to turn the tables a little bit. And then I just shot it last, I just got back about a week ago from shooting another, they're doing another sequel. And because I had a break in the Marvel thing for about four weeks. So I was, went up to Canada. Uh, Sean G wants to know, can you give a shout out to Lauren and Taylor for him? What do you want me to say to Lauren and Taylor? Okay, we'll, we'll wait and ask you that. And okay, so I loved the last Marvel, two Marvel shows. Uh, you know, uh, I forgot the name of it, WandaVision. WandaVision was great. Loved it. I loved uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Loved it. Loved it. But I've already, you know, Loki comes on tonight. Tonight's Wednesday. So the second episode comes on tonight. That's right. And man. I'm telling you, it's like crack. It's like <laughs> crack. It's like you have to watch it, man. Yeah. It's like it's like 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 Star Wars. You know, I'm watching the Bad Batch. And yeah. I love it because it's like it takes you to these worlds that you know when when Star Wars came out, we only had Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, the Christmas store, the Christmas show. Oh yeah, the, oh, the yeah. Star Wars Christmas oh, show. Yeah. And we had like Ewoks and droids, and that's it, you know, when we were you know, when we were younger. And now, you know, this generation is so spoiled because you have like droids you have like the mandalorian we're fixing to get a uh, book of boba we're getting the asaka tano show obi-wan's recording right now we're getting cassius andar in marvel we're fixing to get she hawk you know so there's so much that disney's doing it's just yeah. so amazing and they're also you know, still the, doing still doing the movies so it's not like they're doing either or yeah, I mean, they, you know, they're gonna cross pollinate. They'll take, you know, if it's a hit TV show, it'll go and become a movie and stuff. You like that. know, then and Disney's making two more Star Wars uh, sagas. Yeah. You know, so those are gonna be coming out soon. Plus, you know, Marvel's got everything coming out. I mean, it's like who would have thought yeah. that yeah. Disney exactly. would buy Star Wars and Marvel, and we get a new Indiana Jones. Indiana, you know, we've seen yeah, pictures in the set of Indiana right Jones. Now in Northern England right now. Uh, Sean G said, they're massive fans, so hello would be great. And again, it's Lauren and Taylor. So, hey, Lauren and Taylor. This is a big hello all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Here you can see out my window. There we go. That's not my red pickup truck. Though I wouldn't mind having it. And they're in the UK, by the way. Oh, uh, you're in the UK? I don't yeah. know. Where, yeah. where, wherever you are in the UK, uh, I owe a lot to you because I've had to play a lot of roles from very, from Newcastle to London, parts of different parts of London. Um, and it's the only part of Europe that I've been to. I haven't been to Germany or France. I've only been to London and up in Newcastle. So uh, you guys have a big part of my heart. So here's a big hello. Are you going to get, are you going to start doing conventions where you like sign stuff? Like, you know, these well, cards? I did, I did a lot of that right after The Walking Dead. Um, and then it kind of slows down because you're, you know, a whole batch of, a new batch of characters comes. Mm -hmm. So, you, and then I would go to like, at first I was going to like one every other month. And then I was going to just a few a year. Um, and not, I was supposed to do one that they had down here. But I had to go, I was shooting up in Vancouver, so I couldn't go to it. But yeah, I hope to again. It's really fun. I was talking about it with a guy um, in Canada who'd also been a lot. Of, he was on um, Arrow. He played the bad guy in Arrow. Um, and he was talking about it. it's such a great way you get to meet the fans who basically mm -hmm. gave you the job, you know, because without these people who support your film or your TV show. So it's a great way to interact and talk and, um, Yes, I really enjoy that. Well, you know, I mean, Walking Dead fans, you know, they're crazy anyway. It doesn't matter. You know, they can say the show's like bad in ratings or whatever, but people go out in drones and meet Walking Dead people. You know, yeah, all crazy. the way from walkers to, you know, B Road Park people. It doesn't matter. These people are crazy about it. Yeah. But you don't only have that, you have Insidious and you have The Conjuring. So you have all those things that you know you can take 
pictures from and sell. I mean, it's not like yeah, you, can have, just, you don't have to go to Walking Dead. You can go do everything. Yeah, I've, I've done a couple like horror ones, which were really fun because all these families come out and it's like a really nice time. Um, so yeah, once things settle down and, and they're starting to pop up again, um, it'd be nice to, because you also meet some of the same people. It's like a traveling band um, from other shows or from the same show. And, and Walking Dead's kind of like a, it's like a high school reunion. You, know, you may not have been in that class with that person, but you sure yeah. share something with them. I um, hope that you get to come to Kentucky because you know, we have we have Lexington Comic Con, yeah, oh, okay. and then we have uh, Scarefest, and then we have some small little ones here and there. And there's a couple in Louisville, you know, every once in a while. I'd love for you I'd, to come here. Oh, I'd, I'd, that would be a, I'd, I'd, that'd be a treat. I love I've, I've shot a couple of times in Louisville, and um, that's a great town. But you just I, have to you just have to put up with me for three days though. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Sean said uh, thank you. And he said, yes, Mike, because I guess convention, you know, the, the thing about it is we all want conventions again. You know, we all yeah. want to break free. It's kind of like the Queen song, it's Queen song. I want to break free. Yeah. You know, that's all the commercial. It's well, like, it's the other day I went, to the store for, I went to the store the other day for the first time without a mask. And I was like, do I hold my hand on my face? Do I, I mean, I was just like, whoa, this is so surreal, you know, because I'm one that's wore a mask since March, you know? Yeah. A lot of people, hey, but I wore a mask. I did too. And it's weird, it makes you realize how much it took for granted. It's like, God, just to be able to, you know, not have those, because nobody, you know, it's like not like, oh yeah, I love wearing a mask, but no one wants to wear it. It's to keep people healthy, but it's nice to not have to. And it's funny to watch some of the Walking Dead shots coming out for season 10, yeah. to watch like Jeffrey Dean with a mask on and then this, that's the you know the the shield on his face because yeah. they're walking around like that, and it's like, you know, you half-ass want to think that, come on, this wasn't as bad as what they say it is, and then you half-ass want to go, oh, well it might be, you know, so you're like in between going, okay, I got to wear that mask because I really just don't know, you know. Exactly. Yeah, I've known some people so, got very very sick. So. Yeah, I do too. Of course, you know. Uh, so it, it was like that, but so with this Marvel thing, are you just a, are you just a come in and come out kind of guy? Or are you going to be actually on the show? I'm, I'm on the show. You're <laughs> on the show? Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. We'll be able to talk about it. I don't know when we'll be able to, it won't come out until 2022. So, um, so all you people watching that know Marvel. You got a choice of a couple of shows there. It could be on. So There's all sorts of things. They, they're doing Who, a lot. It could be it. Who knows? You know, if you got a predominant role in it, you know that they're going to say, Walking Dead what? And you're going to be like the new Marvel person, you know? It's like it's like uh, Luke Wilson. Is that his name that's in Loki? Oh, yeah, that the they, right? oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Owen Wilson. Owen Wilson. Yeah. It's like, everybody's like, what did he do before? We don't care. You know, he's yeah. got such a great role on, on Loki. You know, have you watched the first episode? I did. I saw the first one. Yeah, he's perfect for that. He's great. He's like, he's like, we we know you don't, you want to talk. We, 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 we all know it. So, you know, go ahead and talk. And that guy, I forget the guy's people's names, but the guy that plays Loki is just amazing. The guy is just like, he goes there and like, when when he has to take the you know the thing and he's like i don't want to take it and all this and then the other guy gets like evaporated he's like here i got my ticket <laughs> <laughs> it's great i mean those writers are amazing on that stuff yeah. you know i just wish that those writers were the writers who wrote this last star wars movies um yeah you know if they would have let farber as i used to say his name farber yeah, yeah. Him yeah. and the other guy just take over Star Wars. It would have been great. You know, because let's face it, the biggest thing was Baby Yoda, that yeah. little creature back there. Yeah. You know, he was the biggest thing ever, you know. Sean G said, we've been ordered to wear a mask for over 18 months in the UK. Yeah. That's right. I, I was just up in Canada and 
I had to quarantine for two weeks. I mean, I could not leave the hotel, uh, the hotel room, period. They're really serious about it. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. What's crazy, ain't it? Yeah, they're still pretty, they're starting to open up just now. But, um, yeah, did you have to, did you have to quarantine weeks. when you come back to America? No, they don't know because I'm vaccinated. And oh. uh, so, but. Um, did you have any, did you have any problems from your vaccination? No, I got, I was, I, it was funny, my second shot, you know, my arm was a little stiff. That's pretty normal. But I got really, really cranky for three days. I didn't even notice it until after it was gone. I was like, God, I was a real a-hole. <laughs> uh, and I'd be like driving and a bit, any little slowdown would bother me. And like the traffic doesn't bother me. And I, even where I live, there's not much traffic. But yeah, I was just like, and then I read that- Agi agitation. Did you, did you figure this out yourself? Yeah, because it wasn't until. Did you figure that out yourself or did your family tell you? No, if friends and family. We had a friend sitting over and they were like, God, what was wrong with you the last couple of days? Uh, and it was like I popped out <laughs> the third day. It was like, I guess I was just, the whole world just was bothering me, uh, which is crazy because everything's pretty nice so you know everybody's got a different story man you know i know people that were sick for a day like the flu and then other people have said they were sick for a week and yeah you know, they're everybody's got a different story about it and i also i haven't talked about this much but i was in a store the other day true story helps over here she can verify i told the lady i said you have a magnet and she said, yeah, and she put a magnet on her arm, on both uh -huh. arms, and it stayed. And I saw it with my own eyes. No crap from no crap from uh, the internet. I saw yeah. it with my own eyes that this woman was magnetized. Wow. And it was really wild to see. I didn't even believe my own my own self until I saw it. And then when I saw where, it, I had to look through it four times to believe it. Shot? Where she got in the shot or just anywhere? Hey, it didn't matter. Wow. It didn't matter. Wherever she put it on her arm around that area where her shot was, was yeah. magnetized. <laughs> oh, well. Sean G said that's why he didn't want one. I'm here to tell you, I saw it with my own eyes. Okay, I talk a lot of crap. You all know that. You all see me all the time talk crap. But I actually, with my own eyes, saw it. And... Is that like a little magnet? Yeah, a little magnet. Like, you know, the magnet that you have that, like, if you have, like, you work at a restaurant or whatever, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like magnetized to it, something oh, yeah, yeah. magnetized. Just a little magnet. She put her arm down, and it stayed. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then she showed me her other arm. She did it herself. She goes, well, I got it in two different arms. And I was like, okay. And... I was in disbelief, I'm telling you. I was right. like, because I didn't believe the hype. I didn't, I was like, oh, this ain't true. I'm just gonna tell this lady to see what she does. And she did, didn't she hope? Oh, she did magnetize herself, didn't she? Yes. It was crazy. Crazy. Now you can go and do that trick and let everybody know, hey, if you got a Moderna shot or whatever it is shot, you can magnetize your arm. You can't put a phone on there. It's too big. <laughs> oh, model plane is made out of metal. Okay. Uh, okay. That's funny. But yeah. anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Sean said you're the lab rat. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, hey, you know, but I mean, you're in the business and, you know, either you, you have to do it or you can't work, you know? I mean, it's the way it is. And if you fight the system, you won't get to work. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, yeah. I think it's, I think it's pretty valid. And so many people got sick. And it wasn't like just the flu. It was pretty awful. I mean, they're still talking about if we're going to get more payments and all this other stuff. So it's got, there's something got to be there, you know, uh -huh. something's got to be to it. But anyway, it, it's cool that you're working again, man. I mean, I remember when you weren't working and you're sitting there going, what am I going to do now? You know? Yeah, well, that, it's really weird with actors. You tend to go in little, because yeah, I just I did a thing in November and then February, and March, and then this thing and then Canada. So I'm yeah, I'm very grateful. 
It's um, it's yeah, it's nice. And I'm especially you know, during the pandemic. No, no. When you're able to like let the kid out of the bag with this marble thing, you're gonna have to come back and like tell me oh, yeah. all about it, okay? Sure. Sure. I don't want to be seeing it and go. I knew it. I just knew it. <laughs> you know. They bound, they bound to be announcing some of this stuff soon. I mean, because they're trying to get ahead of everything, you know, of who's yeah. doing what and all that. They're, they're good at, they know how to time things. So yeah, I just, I trust them with that stuff. It's kind of cool though, because now you're going to be able to maybe be in that realm for some things, you know? Yeah, it'd be there fun. It's, it's a great, great, great bunch of people. Who yeah. thought we were going to see Iron Man again when we saw him in the first episode of Loki? Yeah, I mean, you know, and so many people are like, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, soap operas, Marvel movies, Star Wars, everybody's like, oh, well, we're not going to see Luke Skywalker again. And guess what? We saw Luke Skywalker again in the last episode of Mandalorian. Yeah. You know, I mean, so you never know. Uh, are you, have you went to the theater and watched Conjuring yet? No, I haven't. I haven't seen the movie yet. You haven't seen the movie yet? No. Or is that because you don't like watching your movies or you just haven't had time? Uh, partly I haven't had time. I don't want to see it by myself. I'd like to see it in a theater with people. I think that's the best way to see a scary movie. Because um, otherwise, I get, I don't like seeing stuff by myself. It's, even though I know how we shot it and all that, it's still scary. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it. it. Yeah, I don't mind being around a lot of other people. Then it's fun. But just by yourself, it's like, we're a boy. When I went to uh, New Orleans for WrestleMania, me and Hope got to watch Blockers with John Cena. Oh, wow. John Cena was doing a, uh, that's the only appearance he made at New Orleans for WrestleMania week. And uh, we went to the Blockers movie, we walked in right when he was walking in. He sat right in front of us. That's and cool. we got to watch a movie with John Cena and watch his expressions on his face of, you know, everything that was in that movie. So yeah. it was pretty fun, you know, to see his expression of what he did you know so i imagine if somebody knew you were going to be there they'd be like watching your expressions you know of what you think and because yeah. <laughs> the conjuring the first conjuring movie wasn't that scary until it got deep into the house yeah but the insidious movies on the other hand were man i don't know they were just i don't know because the movies were just a whole different dimension. Yeah, all um, yeah, all together. Yeah. But uh, so, uh, do you got anything on tap that you're going to be in that we can be looking for that you can talk about at all? Yeah, there's uh, where I spent. This is ridiculous. Now. I went. I was for most of February and March. I was shooting a movie down in the Dominican Republic. Uh, uh, and this has been made public. There's nothing, nothing secret about it. Uh, it's called Shotgun Wedding, and it's directed by Jason Moore, who um, great, great director. Started out in theater, doing Avenue Q and stuff. Uh, Jennifer Lopez and Josh Duhamel and Jennifer Coolidge and Darcy Carden and uh, uh, Desmond Borges and 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 Cassie Hernandez, Callie Hernandez, Cassie Hernandez. Um, and uh, who am I missing? Just a really great, um, um, really great cast. And it's, it's an action comedy. Um, and we shot down there for like a month and a half, two months. So, and that'll be out next June. So a year, and, just about a year from now. And that was with Jennifer Lopez, you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you get to hang out with all those people sometimes? Most of the rest of that, she, is, she was very busy. She was also a producer on the show. She oh. was staying in a rented house because she had staff and stuff and her kids were there. Um, so we didn't see her as much. We talking stuff on set. Um, but the rest of us stayed in a villa, sort of like Summer King. Um, uh, and that was neat because we were in a bubble, a quarantine bubble. Uh, and so that was really kind of neat. We ate all our meals together and hung out and talked. And, and that was very, very fun. Was it was it was that the neatest part of being in movies is being able to go to places like the Dominican Republic and be able to witness their culture, be able to eat their food. Yeah, it's yeah, it, yeah it, it's it's where you feel 
you almost feel silly that you're getting paid. Like they're, you know, oh my gosh, you're getting paid in the middle of winter at the end of a pandemic to fly to a paradise. Because you're also, we're, we're, no, we're not staying, we're pretty sheltered. The Dominican Republic, like a lot of countries, like the United States, there's a lot of poverty. Um, and, and there's a lot of stuff flourishing, but there's a whole, but where we're staying, you know, we're like being taken care of and it's, it's, you're very, very grateful. But I always go back to like this, you know, this first 10, 15 years of pursuing acting, it's, it's miserable. You're doing all these other side jobs. I mean, it's not miserable, but you're not getting to act and stuff as much. Um, so when you get jobs like this, it's just, yeah, you feel very grateful. And you really appreciate it. You don't take any of it for granted. Uh, it, you feel like a little kid. So I'm getting paid to, you know, to make people laugh, and it's fun. It's so you have a pretty big role in this movie coming up. Yeah, yeah. It's a sort of a yeah. It's, it's yeah. I'm, That's I, great. I'm her. I play Jennifer Lopez's future father-in-law. Oh, really? And uh, and Jennifer Coolidge plays my wife, and she's astonished. Do you did you now take for instance that movie? Okay, the one with Jennifer Lopez. You said she produced and everything. Yeah. Did you have to do things for her to see for you to be able to do the movie, or did you have no, to go to an acting it, place or what? It was weird. Most of the time you audition, and this one came out of nowhere. I have a very 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 good manager in Los Angeles and she knows my other work and I guess she knew went to the casting director and the producer and I guess just sort of sold them on me because I just got I got a email saying you're on the short list for this Jennifer Lopez movie and I was like you know it's during the pandemic you're kind of not all together <laughs> yeah I had <clears throat> auditions for that and I went no so I just based on I guess past work and stuff they, I guess they like me, and um, yes, yeah, so I got the job, which is a nice way to get a job instead of. Yeah, I mean, instead of having to, you know, do an audition, wait, and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, it was, just, uh, it was a very nice surprise. That that's cool. So you're kind of like the father of the bride, but not it's the father of the bride. Father of the groom. Father of the groom, kind of thing. Yeah, it's those movies, part, those part, movies are always the best, man. You know, I mean. Uh, you know, Father Bride was hilarious. You know, uh, the other one with, uh, was it Cedric the Entertainer? That they remade that movie from the 60s? Oh. Yeah, oh, I forgot what is that. What was it called? I can't remember. Who's Coming to Dinner or something like that? But they yeah. changed the name of it? I guess it's Coming to Dinner. It was like Wedding Crashers. All that. Oh, all those movies are hilarious, man. So it looks like Coming out of the pandemic, you're starting to get bigger roles. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. It's been really I've been greatly very busy. Um, um, yeah, I'm 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 a happy boy right now. <laughs> where where are you uh, where are you going to next? Have you got anything planned? I don't think I have. Uh, yeah, because all of this, we're, I'm shooting here in Atlanta, near Atlanta. Um, yeah, right now I don't have to travel anywhere, so I'm, I'm here for at least through the fall, so we'll see. Yeah. At least through the fall? Yeah, I like is, being at home. I really like being at home. Is Lana still as big as it was for movies? Yeah, it was crazy. I was just shooting down at a big, uh, where the Pinewood Studios, it's now called uh, Trillith or something. They're, they're building... I could, but they already have like 22 gigantic sound stages, you know, like Warner Brothers has. And uh, when I was down there recently, they're building even more. They've built like four, five, six more. So they're just expanding. Um, yeah, they're shooting a ton of stuff here. It's crazy. So and Tyler Perry owns just about everything, right? Tyler Perry has a, he's converted this old fort, Fort McPherson, and he does a lot of his stuff there. He also rents out, you know, I shot a couple movies there. Uh, first man and a TV series there, because he's got an incredible facility. It's really. It was one of his facilities. What one of his facilities? Hilltop in The Walking Dead. No, I don't think so. It's not. I don't think so. It might be though. <laughs> I 
I'm not sure. And Alexandria, Alexandria was actually where the prison was at one time, right? Didn't he like tear down the prison and make Alexandria there? I don't think so because that's an actual neighborhood. You know, they're actually, well, there were people living there when we shot. Um, not a lot of people. It would be odd because we'd have to stop shooting at like 10 o'clock and then a uh, FedEx truck would come in. <laughs> it was like really disorienting. Was it weird? Was yeah. it weird shooting like yeah. that? Yeah, oh, it was very funny. It was like people were like, what's, uh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I think the prison was, was nearby there, but I, I don't think it was there because that was a housing development that was already being built. They built, mm -hmm. they did actually build that huge steel wall all the way around it. That's not, you know. Uh, really? Oh wow. yeah, that's an actual structure around that neighborhood. So, I'd hate to, I'd hate to, you know, well, I want to come to Atlanta again. I've been there before, but I want to go see all that stuff. But I hate to be that cop person who lives in the house Rick did, and somebody come knock on and go, hey, can I like see your house for a minute? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? You know, it's crazy. Yeah, they so, do tours. They do tours down there now, all the different locations. So. Yeah, they do tours all around those places, and they got guys that are like Ben Walkers or whatever, yeah. like take you around and tour the place and all that. But you've been there long enough; you've seen Atlanta grow. Oh God, yeah. Like for, I've I've seen Sonoya. Sonoya was kind of run down. Um, because people would shoot kind of in that area. I forget, did a couple of TV series down there. Um, but then now it's like, you know, all the stores are open. It's all really pretty. There's a ton of people, restaurants, shops, gift shops. Um, and a lot of Atlanta has kind of flourished that way. Well, Nick and Norman's is there, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so. But anyway, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. Thanks for talking to me again, as always. Yeah. Uh, thanks for giving me that little snippet of, you know, that you're going to be in a Marvel TV series, which is awesome. I really... I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, uh, that's, that's awesome. But I mean, you know, uh, you know, I just wish you the best of luck. You know, like I, I said, I've known you since you were this guy. I was just... Since I was just uh, young. You were that guy, you know, that one time I, I remember. That What's that? Yeah, I, I was that guy. You were that guy one time. But um, thanks for talking to me, Facebook. Absolutely, thanks right? for being here. Yeah. And uh, Take care of yourself. Facebook will be doing it again soon.